with the delays that have occurred and, and uh -huh. you know, us, the, the plan's not going exactly according to plan, has that delay been able to give you guys time to be able to innovate and, and make improvements upon your services? Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, uh, in a sense, the performance statements that I made earlier are an outgrowth of having far more time than we ever expected to tinker is a good word for it. And that, that's one of the things that differentiates suit folks from vehicle developers is that the, uh, even though when we talk about new space, certainly the people at this kind of an event, their costs of trying out new technology are vastly lower than more traditional companies, even against them, the cost of doing suit work and suit development is far lower than it is you know, to, to do other types of hardware development. And I, and I think we've really benefited from that, that even, even when times were at their worst, that doesn't mean we can't uh, afford the materials and the time. And you know, that's another advantage is, is that we have a, a very large facility that we can draw on because of our co-ownership and, and all of that. Um, that we were always able to be steadily saying, okay, it's going to be a while before we're going to sell the products that we want to sell because of how, the state of the industry and all of that. But let's use that time. And, and we, you know, when I look at like particular joints, we're talking tens of generations of, you know, of a particular joint because, you know, the build time might only be a few days or a week or whatever. And there have been a lot of weeks where there was less going on, but it allows us to say, how do we get a little more improvement, a little more improvement, a little more improvement. Um, whereas the vehicle guys, and I, I, I don't dispute this uh, line of decision making, whereas the vehicle guys often are saying, let's sacrifice a little bit of performance for reusability, that, and that, that, that's perfect in the vehicle world, that definitely makes sense. In suits, while that still applies, certainly with the, the fit and some of the other issues, we've been able to go through so many generations of development that we've been able to push out a lot more performance than I think we otherwise would have been. And in a, in a sense, that downtime allowed us to do that. So it's a good, it's a good example. Um, I know that you guys are planning on having different versions of suits, obviously for suborbital vehicles and future orbital vehicles, but hypothetically speaking, would you guys be interested in tapping like the space diving market or have some sort of orbital maneuvering unit or anything like that for EVAs? I, I mean, all those kind of things are interesting projects to us. I would describe, I would describe our team as always chomping at the bit to uh, have the resources to chase one of these really exciting projects. I mean, whether we're talking about the development of a new EVA suit or what, what we've called a space dive suit, and what I mean, and when I say that, I mean you know going well higher than Baumgartner's jump. I mean, I, I think that's I think that's about as far as you can go with that technology. You have to go a lot. F you have to move in a different direction to go farther. Is all I would say. So when we look at those types of efforts. Or, or heck, even a, a surface EVA suit or something like that. Our folks, I mean, they're suit people. They're excited about those kinds of projects. They are chomping at the bit to do those kind of projects. But, you know, at the present time, there's not a good commercial fit to do those kind of things or that I've seen. And, and that doesn't mean there won't be. That doesn't, it doesn't even mean there's not a strong argument with some commercial activities that that should, should exist. I mean, you, you know, the, the examples that are commonly thrown at us and that we've thought about ourselves is, you know, uh, Bigelow's building a space station, they really should have an EVA capability. But the business case for that is actually quite complex. So it's not for us to tell them they need to do that or, or anything like that. So there's, there's a lot behind it. Same thing with, uh, you know, uh, uh, replacing or creating an alternative EVA on the space station. We believe we could build a really cheap but high performance suit. There's a lot of interesting stuff we could do there. We'd really like to get into that area. At the same time, there's a lot of factors that NASA would have to think about on that. Everything from you know safety to programmatics to cost and all these other things. And again, that's a complicated thing. And then it comes back the same way with, with a space dive type activity. It's interesting. It would be really, from a technology standpoint, it's valuable. One can certainly see business value to it. Um, at the very least in moving towards a means 
of which by which to get out of a vehicle in an emergency. So there's there's a clear path that makes sense, but filling out the entire um, sort of the entire picture of a business case, and you know, in government maybe the word business case means something slightly different than it means in commercial. But that, in either case, you know, you have to, there has to be a real justification for spending the resources for doing some of those these things. And while we really want to do it, I'm not aware of where those uh, where the, sort of where those things have come together yet. And I'm intimately aware as, a, as an entrepreneur and as a business person how hard it is to put those things together. That said, as people want to do that, we do have interactions with these organizations and if there's an opportunity to, to, for us to help put together that business case, then we'd like to do that and you know, sort of we're standing by to do that.